It is no secret that Tom Travojevic's 2021 season has been truly remarkable. He's brought a team back from the dead to a premiership contender, all in about nine weeks. It got me thinking, what other seasons have mirrored Tom Travojevic's? And off the top of my head, I thought, hmm, how about Jared Haynes' 2009 season? Both fullbacks, representative players, and otherworldly talents. By using statistics and analysis, let's take a deep dive in this episode of Versus. Quickly before we get into this video, I just want to mention that 93% of you aren't subscribed. I want to lower that number to about 80% by the end of the year. I'm also going to be transitioning into other Australian sports by year's end, so be excited for that. Let's get into this video. So I've broken this video up into sections. First, let's have a look at the players from a statistical standpoint. Hayne, after the 26 games, finished the 2009 season with 175 average run meters, 14 tries, 178 tackle breaks, an average of 6.8. 34 line breaks, an average of 1.3 per game, and 19 try assists or 0.73 per game. A spectacular season, but without context, these are just numbers. So let's have a look at Turbo Tom's 2021 statistical output. Now keep in mind, Tommy has only played 10 games so far this year, compared to Haynes' 26 in 2009. So I've averaged Tommy's statistics to give you a fairer comparison. Tommy has had an average of 219 run meters per game, a total of 15 tries, 52 tackle breaks, which if divided by the number of games, which is 10, gives us an average of 5.2, still lower than Haynes' 6.8 per game. Turbo has also had 15 line breaks, which averages to 1.5 per game, just above Haynes, and 14 try assists, or 1.4 per game, significantly more than Haynes' output. Looking at these numbers based on raw individual statistics, it seems pretty clear that Turbo comes out on top. He either improves upon Jared Haynes' statistics or is around the same area with 16 less games. Of course, with five rounds remaining, there are still variables. Trebojevic might statistically bomb for the remainder of the season, lowering his averages and totals, but it's unlikely that that's going to happen. Now, let's move into the next section. Which are the accolades? Obviously, with the 2021 season still going, we're going to have to speculate a bit. For Jared Haynes, 2009 was a huge year in terms of accolades. Hayne would win the Rugby League World, Rugby League Player Association and Rugby League International Federation Player of the Year in 2009. Hayne during the final seven game period won six men of the matches and would storm past Jonathan Thurston to claim the 2009 Dally M Fullback and Player of the Year award. With Travojevic still in the current season, he can't win the end of the year awards, but what he does have already is a Wally Lewis medal, awarded to the best player in state of origin. Now to me that medal carries a lot of worth. To be the best player at the origin level is a tough ask. Now speculating on the Dally M winner for 2021, it is also not out of the question that Travojevic will win it. At round 12, which is the final round Dally M votes are accessible to the public, Tommy sat in full spot. Remember, this was after playing seven games while his compatriots had already played 12. Since round 12, Travojevic has played three games with two of them undoubtedly three vote games whilst his biggest competition in Nathan Cleary has only featured in one game during this period. Cleary is out with an injury and is not a stretch to think that Tommy is either leading or in the top two for Dallium votes at the moment. My own guess is Turbo will win the Dallium award if he stays healthy, and if he doesn't, he's still probably going to win the Dallium fullback of the year award. With this still guesswork though, the season is still currently going and I just can't give it to Turbo. I have to give this section to Jared Hayne. It might be a bit unfair, but for some reason I felt like making the video in round 12. What can I say? Now for this last section, let's have a look at who had the biggest influence on their team. Starting with Hayne in the 09 Eel side, they'll be sitting in 14th place by round 18 with a record of 5 wins, a draw and 12 losses. Hayne would play a quarter of the season at centre and 5-8 before moving to his preferred position at fullback. Their record did not improve significantly with him at fullback until about round 19 with a win against the Melbourne Storm. This win would spur the side to win seven consecutive games in the run-up to the finals. This period of games is where we saw Hayne really shine through for his side and carry the team. He would win six men of the matches during this period and was the out-and-out -out best player in the NRL. This form continued into the finals as the Eels sneaked into the final eight spot and won every final until losing in the grand final to the Melbourne Storm. Melbourne, as many of you know, were over the salary cap that year, which is unfortunate as an Eels Premiership would have further vindicated Haynes' incredible season. Even with the success, it's still hard to overlook how poor the Eels were prior to that hot run of form. 
Turbo's contribution, much like Haynes, has been immense. Brett Finch describes Turbo as the most important player for his team ever, and for good reason. Before Tom's return from a lingering hamstring injury in round 6 of the season, the Manly Sea Eagles were woeful. I mean, listen to this statistic from the beak himself. Yeah, they were, yeah, outside the Cowboys, in 2002, they had the worst start in the history of the NRL. Yeah. And then Tommy comes around. They're a top four side. Well, Tommy comes back. They've lost one game to Penrith, and they're the only team that's pushed them the whole way. Yes, yep, you yep, know? yep. They had, after five rounds, a record of one win and four losses, conceding 34 points per game, which put them into second last place. Turbo, in his first game back after an extremely long layoff, would turn things around, amassing 189 run meters, two line breaks, two triases, and four tackle breaks, which breathed a new life into Manly's season. Tom, in just four games, would already have five tries and eight triases, and now in round 20, has revived the club into sixth place, only two wins outside the top four. They have won eight of their last ten games with Turbo featuring, and the Seagulls have now a positive for and against record of 151 points, one of the highest in the competition, an incredible turnaround. With the 2021 season still in motion, we don't know how far Manly will go. The sharp turnaround in form from Turbo and his side has been impressive, and although Hain and his team struggled for the majority of the 2009 season, his ability to carry his team through that finals run was incredibly impressive. I feel that the correlation between winning and Turbo is just too strong in this situation. To see Manly go from one of the worst starts in NRL history to a premiership contender in about four weeks was just absolutely incredible and show that Tom Trevojevic may be one of the most valuable players in NRL history to one specific side. Combine that with the fact that Parramatta weren't very good for 18 of the 26 rounds, I have to go with Turbo here. So that wraps up the first versus video I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments on which two players you want to see next in this series. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that post notification bell so you're notified when the next video comes out. We're already halfway to 10k subscribers which is actually incredible, I'm very very appreciative. I hope you enjoyed this video again and thank you all for watching.